Witch Chat War Dog message over. Welcome back, guys, to day five of our Donged Wall campaign. Uh, I'm going to kick things off. We're going to be a little bit quicker on the start time today because uh, I'm a little bit later with starting the actual stream. So let's jump straight to the live scene here, which would probably show if I changed the game capture. See if it will figure it out. There we go. We have Lubu standing in the fields of Anding. And we we are in spring 205 AD. Presently our situation is we're at war with basically the north of China. Plus the east of China and the south of China. Wonderful. Uh, but our territory only really borders some of these problems to the north. Uh, the Han Empire's capital does have yellow turban problems and Zhongjiang problems. Uh, we have, of course, lost Shi He to uh, Zhongjiang and Han Sui. But uh, on the home front kind of thing, uh, we have Lubu pushing towards Anding farmland in the east. And we have Guo Se pushing towards Anding livestock farm in the northwest. Um... We could potentially do with having a third army, but we can't really afford a third army right now. So that's where we're at. Oh, that'd be cool, Lissa. <coughs> so, I believe we will have done everything we can do. Uh, in regards to this turn, so we will proceed forward into the summer of 205. Good, Liu Chong has declared war on us, because that's what we needed. Han Sui will sign peace with us for 2,794 sure. Han Sui, of course, is uh, the kind of light red colours up here. He has taken she her off of us, and he does have Anding farmland. He is also significantly weaker than we are. If we put things in order of strength, uh, we're a kind of on par with Sun Tzu, Yuan Xiao, Liu Biao, Liu Bei, Cao Cao, and Liu Chong. Most other people are weaker than we are. But what do we think to Han Sui's offer of peace, guys? Reject, I want Anding back, then we'll take peace. Yeah, I, that's kind of where I'm at too, Ryan. Zhong Liao saying no. My dad is working Monday, Wednesday, Friday during the quarantine right now. Doesn't really have a specific end time, so I was going to stream while he wasn't home to limit background noise. That makes sense, Lisa. Anding! Emotek. Jia Xu saying reject as well. Looks like Han Sui is getting told to stick it. Alright, there's a few things going off here, diplomatically speaking. Uh, we've built some craftsman shacks in Wudu. Alright, I don't think that... Uh, stick it, it, wrong game. Indeed. I don't think Mike's here yet, Ryan, so you're going to have command of Lubu's army for the time being. Guo Sir is not in a particularly favourable position here against Ma Tung. I guess Guo Se is going to have to hold to the farmland. Lubu pushing forward. Han Sui's army is in the farmland. What do you want to do, Ryan? You can't quite make it to the farmland itself. Han Sui, along with Ma Wan, is uh, in the farmland.
upgrade the craftsman's workshop Imatech in Wudu. Uh, well, if, <laughs> which one? Because we've got craftsman shacks and and we've got communal workshops, and you've kind of said half of both there. Is Lubu level eight? He yes, he is. Self. Shufty forwards a bit and drop into ambush. Zaltation ambush success himself. chance a hundred percent in the plains. The shacks. The shacks. Okie doke. Imotech upgrading the craftsman shacks to craftsman workshops in Wudu as he is Jia Shu, the administrator. We have got quite a few peeps kicking around. I am a cunning fox. You sound surprised. Uh, yeah, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but uh, I am. Alright, I think that's all we can get done for this turn too. We're going to have to see how this rolls out here. What position have we got? Oh, we've got the other three positions. But we're not... Uh, we're not doing those just yet. Tao Ying will sign peace with us for 2,745 sure. Tao Ying is... The bright green blobs over here. What do we think? Zhong Liao saying accept. Can we get money per turn instead, says Jiao Chan. We can see. Whoops. We can get 415, which would flatten out at 4,100, which would be more. Joshu saying negotiate for three to 500 a turn as well. He's nowhere near relevant, so I would take peace. You can argue out the specifics. Just wanted to pop in, have to study for my exam at five. Good luck with the exam, Lissa. Thank you for stopping by, I really appreciate that. Do it! That'll take us up to a plus. It will, actually. Alright, we're going to sign peace with Tao Ying. Liu Bei and Kong Rong formed a coalition. Cao Cao and Yuan Shao have gone to war. There's a rebellion imminent in Anding. Hmm. I think Guo Se is going to fall back towards Anding and fight the rebellion instead. Because there's not really um, any alternative. Dong Zhuo has gained the energetic trait. This one spends every waking hour in motion, going about all their activities with excessive enthusiasm. We now have an energetic and dutiful Dong Zhuo. Um, Imatech, thank you for the host. Joe, thank you for the host. Welcome to the stream, buddy. To energetic officers and garrison for Hans Wei. Alright, I'll get there. We've gained a jade horse. Hmm. You know what? Dong Zhuo does not actually have uh, an ancillary equipped, so we're gonna get. He's gonna have a jade horse. Uh, Wu Du has completed craftsman workshops. Ryan Han Sui has himself, who is pretty trash. 
and Ma Wan, who is also pretty trash. They have two retinues, or between the two of them, obviously. And the garrison is one and a half retinues. So they probably have, well, they have four units more than you do, but one less officer. Not going to be too active in chat currently at work, Joe. No worries, bud. Appreciate you stopping by the stream. And thank you very much for the lurk. Asler, welcome to the stream. Guys, say hello to Asler. I think Asler may have been here before, but they've certainly had a gift sub prior to arriving today. Welcome them to the Wolfpack, please. Upgrade them workshops again if we can. Let's have a look. We can. We can upgrade them to artisan workshops, Imatech. So we shall do that. Let's move up and starve them out. Interesting. Apparently, in a night battle, you would win a Pyrrhic victory. But in a day battle, you would f suffer a valiant defeat. What do you want to do, Ryan? Do you want to continue with starving them out, or...? We'll starve them out if they come out to fight it's the same game if not we gain the advantage that's not true because if they attack you it will not you won't have the option to tr change to night battle because they'll be attacking so it's not strictly true but I shall leave it as a starve out for the time being <laughs> Uh, Guo Sir has already moved this turn. I don't think that there's anything else we can do. We're going to try and wait for this rebellion to pop up in On Ding. Why is the public order so bad? Yeah, minus 20 from having no food reserves. Which is to be expected, I guess. But we'll push on into the uh, f autumn there's the rebellion can we buy food off anyone potentially my tongue is on the move nobody really likes us Ryan so I doubt we'd get a food deal Uh, this is probably going to be for you, Ryan. The autumn rains have come and the rivers bloat with the fullness of the season. One of your generals suggests that we use this to our advantage by bursting a nearby dam. The floodwaters will overwhelm an enemy village, but may surge onto our own lands too. What would you like to do, Zhongliao? Do nothing. To inflict our war on innocent civilians is unconscionable. You could not do it. Would not do it. Uh, Dong Li has gained a rank. Now, uh, didn't Tyler end up sponsoring Dong Li after some back and forth? Yes, so we are not going to level Dong Li up. Uh, Xiao Yuan has been promoted to Cao Cao's Grand Director. That's good news over there for our spy. Let's take a look at him whilst we're uh, thinking about that. What officers does Cao Cao have? Hmm, not very many great ones, to be honest. Ren Jun is not happy over there. We could use Ren Jun to uh, discredit the faction, I think, or maybe we can't. 
Does it have to be somebody at court or? Why is this saying? Why can't we do this? Apparently Lil Gwei can do it. I don't know what the stipulations are for who can do this. Ground control to Major Tom. Welcome to the stream, Dylan. How is your Monday going, bud? Think it comes down to traits? Yeah, it might do. Maybe he's got, like, um, ambitious or uh, disloyal or something like that. Well, I'm going to... Uh, we've got 100 and 100, so we may as well do something. So we're going to have Lo Gui spread some dissatisfaction in Tao Tao's court. Remember your disloyalties. As your spy's insistence becomes desperate, the malcontent, rather than focusing on his disdain for the faction, instead shifts his ire and suspicions upon the spy himself. A few well-placed words from reputable members of your undercover network might sway their attention back to the matter at hand. The faction is a disgrace. Just in case anybody's never played the game before, and or you've just bought it, or you're thinking of getting it, any time you do a spy action... There's always one of these events, right? Which essentially says you're going to have to increase the input on some of, like, one or both of these, right, to, to get this to be successful. And if you click cancel, it still costs you the base, but there's a high chance that you'll be caught. So, like, never ever do these. Like, if you've got 65 of this and it costs 65, don't do it. You need at least, a, you need a good cushion. I don't know, like... I usually go for a cushion of 20, but I have seen plus 25 on some of these before. So, uh, I mean, when you're at 100, 100, it shouldn't really be a problem, but we're going to commit. One of our spies has successfully convinced a general to discredit their own faction. A combination of petty but unrelenting tricks, a spreading of rumours and the theft of the general's horse have all worn away at their morale, encouraging them to voice their discontent. Good. How's our encirclement looking now? Good question, Ryan. Uh, it's now predicting a close victory. I guess because they're taking casualties immediately. So I'll click this to move on to other stuff, but let me know what you want to do. Um, Imatech Wudu has completed its artisan workshops. What's a night battle looking like? Still a close victory with medium casualties. More upgrades in Wudu. What would you like to... Well, you've only got one option in Imatech. You can upgrade communal workshops. You can either go down government workshops path or down the currency inspector office path. Which way would you like to go? Government workshops. Done. Um. We're going to get rid of this rebellion. We'll do a delegate. Supposedly Guo Sir lost a duel, but I'm sure the duels are broken in delegates right now. Um, we will take... You know what? We're going to ransom because our uh, treasury is actually pretty low. No, we're not. We're going to take replenishment because income's still pretty decent. New Fu, it's the same shame that Arya is at work. New Fu and Dong Li, so Tyler and Arya's characters have become friends. Sun Shu Shu has been killed. Um, Guo Se is going to. Hold on, let me check his traits. Direct, suspicious, and ambitious. Yeah. Guo Se is going to move up to An Ding Toolmaker. Help defend that from Ma Tung. 
No, they haven't fixed his card. I think he's definitely a champion, as on the post-battle screen, his card was green. I don't know. I'm sure they'll get it sorted at some point. Um, Han on you were is low on uh, stuff right now, but she shouldn't get any lower, so we'll just ignore her. Can we dispatch more spies? No. Delegate on a night battle. Attack the farm, please. Okie doke. Farm. Night battle. Delegate. Ma Wan was killed. Even though he supposedly won a duel against Lu Bu. This is how I know this stuff is broken. It reverses the results unless you actually fought the battle. Ryan, what would you like to do with Onding Farmland? Well, you did cut it kind of fine, Ryan, but uh, I managed to check. Occupy. Ma Wan has been killed in battle. That's helping, helping our food, but uh, not a super amount. Ryan, do you want to repair the farmland? Did say it twice, did you? Oh, you did, but uh, I was dealing with the uh, Imotech. All right here. Uh, I think that's all we can get done. So we shall proceed. Can Ma Tung Night Battle? No. He cannot. Proceeding on. Yen Shao will sign peace with us for 1700 sure. Yen Shao is, of course, the rather large brown blob over here in the northeast. I'm guessing that his war with Cao Cao is occupying most of his attention. What do we think, noble officers? Accept peace, another problem off our plate. Yeah, Asler, anytime there's a decision, feel free to weigh in, buddy, if you're still here. Imatech saying negotiate for 200 a turn. I guess that would be a profit, so let's have a look. Don't think he will, because that's quite a substantial... Oh, no, he will. He may even do 250. Shit, he may even do 300. Okay. Apparently Yuan Shao has no concept of money. At all. Alright, Jesus. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with you and Shao? Alright, we can get 540 per turn off of him, which turns out to be uh, 5,500 sure. Diao Chan saying yes. I'm pretty sure Zhong Liao is going to be on board either way because it gets something off our plate. Jia Xu is the one who recommended that we renegotiate, so he's probably going to be fine with it. So, yeah, I think we're going to take that. Ma Tung moving down to the west of Guo Se's position. Mm. 
Xiao Yuan's loyalty is wavering. I'd rather you didn't. What does that increase by? Gain per turn, 25. I'm going to wait at least one turn before I uh, try and maintain his loyalty. Didn't Ryan learn the game through the stream before buying the game? Yes, he did. Uh, On Ding has another rebellion imminent. Diao Chan, Sarah, and Lu Bu have become friends. Is that Diao Chan's first friend? No, she was already friends with Zhong Liao, but now she's friends with Lu Bu too. All three of them share a bond for zeal. Derek, welcome to the stream. Even though I haven't the slightest clue what's going on, I'm here. You may develop a slight clue as we go on, Derek. Um, clues are in short supply, but uh, we do seem to give people some of them. I'm friends with my husband. Nice. Yes. Um, right. Ma Tung is to the west of An Ding. Um, Guo Se is just going to keep moving around the opposite side of An Ding so that Ma Teng has to attack the, the garrison if he wants to fight. Um, yeah, you'll pick it up. You'll pick it up. Again, Ryan actually mostly learned the game before he even bought it by joining these streams. Uh, Ryan orders for uh, Lu Bu's army. Drop into ambush to bait him in, otherwise he may just go south to the town. Head north towards the horse pastures. Very well. Lu Bu on the march. That's a fair point, Chong Liao. Guo Se will drop into ambush stance. Imitech, thank you very much for dropping the join me 3k command. I don't think we can get anything else done in the winter, so we're going to proceed forward. Uh, say what? Who's in that coalition? We Liu Bei and Kong Rong are inviting us to the coalition to restore order. Guys, <laughs> what do we think? I was a big Rome Total War 1 and 2 player, so I knew the base mechanics, but I was never at all interested in this era of history, so I wasn't interested in this game, which is where Tom's streams got in. I mean, we're restoring order violently. Yeah, I know, right? Josh, you is saying take the deal. I think Zhong Liao and Diao Chan are supporting, supporting this. I mean, shit. That's that's an interesting offer there from Liu Bei and Kong Rong. I'd accept doesn't hurt to have some friends to distract the enemy. Yeah, I think we're going to join <laughs> join Liu Bei and Kong Rong. What the fudge? Ji Zhao Lian. Ji Zhao Lian. Up. Oh. Looks like Ma Tung did get suckered in. How strong are they? He does 1.4k AP. Ma Chao is mostly trash. She is definitely trash. He's got a rival present, so does he. It's probably the pair of them. Okay. Uh, New Fu does a lot of AP damage. 
but he's the only one. Attacks 24 times a minute. I think Nyu Fu could probably beat either Ma Tung or Ma Chao in a duel. Um, however, Arya's not here. And I don't know if I want to fight a battle purely to have her character do a duel if she's not here. So I think I'll just delegate. The period's biggest good boys, Ryan. Like Liu Bei is the good boy, goodest of boys, but Kong Rong's hardly a bad guy. Grab the replenishment. Ma Tung is now trying to run away. Uh, we look. It looks like we've got Liu Chong pushing in towards Luo Yang with significant forces. Wang Kuang has been succeeded by Wang Feng Yue. Artful versus honourable. Your peaceful meditation is disturbed by an angry discussion between two of your retainers happening nearby. You listen to the argument. As a bastion of honour, I cannot allow this to stand. You have taken countless bribes for army rations, says the first. If you want, I can involve you, argues the second. How does half sound? They are unaware you are listening. I think Dong Zhuo... I mean, he is now dutiful, but that's not necessarily honourable. Um, and he is greedy as well, so I think we'll go with the artful person, Zhe Yue. This woman is industrious, if not insalubrious. You commended her for her effort, but with a stern warning. Ba Shi, uh, there's an, a rebellion imminent in Ba Shi. Not if we exempt them from tax, which doesn't really do too much damage to our income, so we'll just exempt them from tax for a bit. Uh, Imotech, Wudu has completed its government workshops. There's a rebellion in Onding. Which Guo Sir will go and make short work of. Hey, I hear that man. Always extremely indecisive on what I want to play. Tell me about it. I've wanted to buy Planet Zoo for a long time, but I'm afraid I'll spend way too much time on there. Planet Zoo is awesome, man. I love that game. I haven't played enough of it recently, but it is kick ass. Whip! There goes his head. I would like to push Han's way for peace so I can move south if you're not helping. I mean, I'm not trying to help. I'm trying to tell you the truth. And then Guo Se is going to go straight for Ma Tung. Tung Man was the yellow turban re rebel that we just killed. Uh, you want to push Han's way for peace, Ryan? Oh, we we can see. I'm. I think he probably will. He wouldn't vassal, vassalize. But uh, peace is apparently pretty strong. Although, oh no, that's far too much. I mean, shit. He's loving the idea of peace, though. Fuck, I bet we could demand territory, actually. Uh, we can't demand she, her, because we don't border it. 
We could demand Shuo Fong horse pastures, which he'd be fine with. But unfortunately, the way that they've kind of... I think they redid the way that trading territory works, or I just never got it before. If we took the horse pastures, we would be able to take, like, the other two pieces, because they touched the horse pastures, but only in a later deal. Um, what's that? That's Shuo Fung as well. Jin Chung. Oh, that there, Ma Tung, anyway. Alright, well, at the very least, we can demand he gives us the horse pastures. Eight food and 200 gold a turn. We can try. I'm going to see if he's got... Oh, hello. He's got robes of the omen maker. Let's see if we can throw them in in as well. We can. Uh, request food trade. I don't think he's going to give us eight, given that he's got... Yeah, he's only got nine. Yeah, he won't give us food because he's not got a lot. We could probably request some regular payment, though. Alright, so we can get a total of 2,300 sure off him. Uh, Robe of the Omen Maker and the uh, Schwolfang Horse Pastures. What do you guys think of that deal? That deal is acceptable to Zhong Liao. Jia Xu says we should accept too. Anybody else want to weigh in on this peace deal with Han Sui? I don't think he'll, call, he'll hold to it. Eventually he'll declare war on us again, but uh, that's fine. Doesn't look like anybody else is coming in, so on... Oh, Diao Chan coming in as well. Zhong Liao, Diao Chan and Jia Xu saying, let's do it. So we're going to propose well, peace with Han Sui. Excellent. So if we go to diplomacy, now our enemies are getting fewer in number. Um, Ryan orders for Lu Bu's army. Shuofang uh, horse pastures. We can actually upgrade. So we shall. Zim, welcome to the stream, buddy. I'm doing okay. How's your Monday going? On Ding still has big problems. However, we can exempt it from tax for the time being. And uh, we won't be bankrupt. Although, food-wise, that does quite a lot of damage to us. I would head on to the river and start heading south towards Luoyang port. I mean, I don't think you're going to get to the port in time. But four turns, four turns. I mean, it's up to you, Ryan. If you went by land, even just moving at normal marching pace, you would get to this river in four turns. If you jumped onto the stream or the onto the uh, the Yellow River, you would get to more or less the same spot in four turns. So the question is, do you want to be going down the river, or do you want to just come in, land, and replenish on the way? Which one of the Peach Garden Oath boys are you? Are you asking me, Imatek? We may have to cut back into Chang'an. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, Ryan. So, by land, Lubu is going to head south once again. And actually... Really? He only adds a plus seven there? Well, that sucks. Uh, Imatek, did you say something about upgrading Wudu? Uh, unfortunately, the only thing left is to upgrade the city, which would cost us food. 
So I am not going to... Well, Dong Zhuo is not going to permit you to do that. We are currently having food issues. Asking everyone. I don't know which of the Peach Garden brothers I would be. Um, I'm not a massive fan of any of them. Like, I have characters in the period that I'm a much bigger fan of than those guys. Um, it's spring, so we're going to do a save. That can go away. That can go away. And that can be overwritten. Cool. Uh, we also need to pick a reform. Do we have a possible food reform available? Uh, we can unlock farm tool distribution or livestock estates. I don't know if those are going to be useful to us. That's not that one. That's a grain estate. I think livestock estates require a livestock subsettlement like that one. Um. Farm tool distribution. I feel like that's government support. Aha! It is. It's that one. So actually, farm tool distribution is probably going to be pretty useful for us. So we'll grab that one. So, provincial iron tool forgers. Iron tools last longer and work better than any of their predecessors. We're going to grab that reform. Which is going to mean that we can upgrade... Yes, we know. We've done that. Thank you. Uh, where is this? This is Chang'an. Does An Ding have one of these? No, it does not. I still think this would be useful. So we're going to grab that. It may well be useful in An Ding too. Um, you know what? Guo Sir is going to demolish the rural administration office there and try and spec back towards food production. Yeah, I loved Wildlands storyline, Derek. I know it upset Bolivia, but <laughs> it was still pretty cool. Um, right, hold up a second. Oh, I just realized that uh, Jashu and Diao Chan, of course, both have unique art, so they don't need robes of the Omen Maker. But I guess we shall... Uh... Eh, no, I don't know if that suits Dong Zhuo. He's still greedy after all. And Li Ru hasn't done a particularly large amount for the faction. However, we could potentially be sending some peeps on assignments. Let's have a look who we want to do that with. Um, let's go to Chang'an, check assignments. How much corruption does Chang'an have? 6%. She's a level 4 though, so we don't really want to do that. Uh, if we're going to be doing a building up here, we may want to send one of our sentinels up there to supervise construction. How old is Chu Ying? Chu Ying is 19. Okay, you're being sent up there to supervise construction. Um, back to Chang An. Income from industry. I don't know if we make any significant income from industry anywhere. Oh, but we do. We make a significant amount in Wudu. So 
So Zhe Yue is going to be sent to Wudu. Jia Shu, you will be receiving Zhe Yue for the next three years to help your income from industry. See where else we've got here. We can do peasantry or commerce as well. Um, although I don't know if I really want to improve Li Ru's level. Although saying that, why not? Let's have Li Ru in Chang An stimulate markets. Nah, we don't need to get on the missions, Ryan. We're doing fine. Okie doke, that's assignments done. Uh, oh, Han An Yue is not happy at all. Hmm. Let's send her a gift of a clayfish. Because you're a motherfucking clayfish, clayfish. Okay. Public order is not going well for us. Ah yes, Shaho Yuen, I also need to maintain the loyalty of. Whom do you serve? A keen-eyed and overly concerned member of the faction remarks your spy's increasingly detached demeanour and has set about harrowing them about matters of loyalty. The issue might be justified or deflected with some planning, or the busybody removed from the picture entirely. Our spy has been reminded of their loyalties to our cause. Their likelihood of being swayed by the enemy has been diminished, if only temporarily. We need to up the food income. Yeah, I'm trying. Alrighty, that's going to do it for the spring of 206. Let's proceed forth. Sun Sir will sign peace with us if we give him the robe of the omen maker that Han Sui just gave us and an eavesdropper. What do we reckon, guys? Job on soon. Jog on even. And F him. I guess we're not doing that then. Does he have territory close to us or... I mean, he's got territory that borders the Han, which borders us, but right now I guess he's not a super threat. Go chew on some arrows, boy. Well, seems like that's a resounding no. Liu Chong has arrived. Liu Chong himself does quite a bit of damage. Luo Jun does a fair amount of damage too. Uh, oh, he's got Chun Royal Guard with him too. I don't know if we can really win this, to be honest. They've got a lot of shields. Their officers are good.
was Liu Chong in the game before Mandy? If not, who was there before? He was not, and I think it was just Han territory. Or oh, Liu Chong with a non-special portrait. That may actually be correct, Imotech. I uh, I don't recall it, but you might be right. <coughs> ah, shit. Do we try and defend this? They outnumber us by 800. And they have two pretty big officers. Nah, I don't really want to do it, to be honest. Even if we win, it'll be a really rough slog. So we're just going to delegate and let them have it. That has significantly damaged our income. Yeah, I think that's what it was, Ryan. Kongsun Zan and Yuan Shao have signed a peace treaty. The fate of the Emperor. We're back on this again. Your time as the rightful Prime Minister of the Han has been recognised as just, and the Emperor is happy with his lot in life. You may continue along this path if you wish, though some of your people suggest alternative options. What do we reckon, guys? Regretted Germ 3, welcome. How detailed is the individual combat between units? So, between officers in duels and when officers are fighting each other there's like some there's sets of matched combat animations like that are actually timed together and like work together uh some of it is kind of just units mashing together it's kind of a combination of the two yeah I've, i mean i feel like in in Total War Rome 2, it was more common to see units having matched animations against each other. I don't think there's quite so much of that in Total War 3 Kingdoms. But certainly the officers get a lot of it. No worries, buddy. Welcome to the stream. Continue. No point rocking the boat. Matty! Welcome to the stream. So Ryan saying continue as Prime Minister. No opposing votes, so we'll go with that. The Han may be weakened, but the Emperor is still the Emperor. There is no greater honour than to serve as the Regent of the most divine man under heaven. There's a rebellion imminent in Anding again. Um, we've built quite a few things, actually. Anding has completed demolition of its rural administration office. So we shall go ahead and build it gains most of its money from industry. Food and industry by the looks of things. Uh, we could really do with extra food. So we're going to get a drifter farming camp from uh, under Guo Sir's orders. Star Fox, Sarah, welcome to the stream. Everybody rolling in right now. How is everybody's Monday going? Um, Chang An has also completed farm tool distribution. Shuo Fang has b finished the tribal horse breeder. Um... We can't really afford to mm, this is tough.
You know what? Gwosa is ambitious and direct, so we are going to have him head up and attack Martung. Martung only has 35 troops with him, so get wrecked, Martung. We've captured Yu Wen Xiu. She's 31, relentless, wise, and solitary. And she would join us if we wanted her to. What do we think, guys? Imatech saying can't afford? Probably correct. Technically, we can, but we'd only have be making 134, sure. Imatex voting for release. Anybody else? Not seeing anybody, so we're going to go with Jashu Imotech. Who has said release. And we will release her. Um... I mean, shit, we might as well take the replenishment because that money's not really very much. Guo Se and Dong Li have become friends. He's at full strength right now. Just going to push in towards Anding Livestock Farm. Ryan, Lubu's orders. Are we continuing to march inland towards Chang'an or...? No worries, regretted germ. Everybody's allowed to put their opinion forth in this game. We are playing with sponsor and officer on. So some of our characters are actually uh, guided by specific players, but... Even if you don't have a sponsored character, feel free to uh, put your opinion in. Force march it towards Chang'an. Lu Bu's army, being directed by his captain Zhang Liao, sponsored by Ryan, is going to force march towards Chang'an because Liu Chong's forces are on the way. Trade has been suspended because they've taken our trade port, which is our only route onto the water. Shuo Fang can actually upgrade its horse pastures to tribal horse camps, which we are going to do. And then in terms of diplomacy, yeah, I actually feel like Guo Se should be able to boff this and then potentially grab this. Then Ma Tung's going to be pushed back here. We could maybe lose ground here if he re redeploys his army, but we'll see. But it's possible Guo Se might be able to defeat Ma Tung's forces on his own now. We shall see. That's going to do it for the summer of 206, though, I think. Liu Chong sending an army through the pass into Han territory, which is interesting, but it doesn't particularly do any make any threats towards us. Han Sui has now declared war on Ma Tung. Interesting. There's a rebellion in Anding, but we will be ignoring that for a little while. Anding has completed its drifter farming camp. The town's garrison is really not very big. Hmm... I think we shall
we shall deploy Li Jue to defend An Ding from the rebellion. Or at least try and hold it for a bit longer. Oh good, Ma Tung's reformed his army in front of water. A valiant defeat. We'll try to starve them out. I don't know if that's going to work, but we'll see. Meanwhile, Ryan, Lubu's orders? Or Zhang Liao's orders for Lubu's forces, rather. Ah, hold up. Said that the god of the underworld resides within Mount Hua's great peak. That's cool, I've never seen that before. Did we lose Ryan? Back into normal stance, head towards Luoyang trade port via Chang'an. Very well. Lubu on the move. Wolfang is now at minus 20 because of reserves. Yeah, we really need to get this food situation under control. Does Bashi produce any food? No, it doesn't. So there's no point in doing that. Don't think there's anything we can do now to improve the food. Although I guess we could try trading with Liu Bei for some food. Let's see. No, he's not. He's only got one, so he's not going to give us any. Kongi Rongi Ru, you love trade, and you've got a shitload of food. Why don't you give us some food, mate? Four. Could we offer you an ancillary, maybe? An eavesdropper, perhaps? Maybe even a labor recruiter. Well, you know what? We don't actually need six, so that's fine. We'll send you a bunch of two dudes for four food. That'll make... Yeah, why not? Two dudes for four food, guys? With Kongi Rongi Ru? The Kong Rong Road Show? That should stabilize our food then, I buy. <laughs> I think we're gonna we we've got to do it because we need to stabilize the food because the food's now affecting public order which is just giving us more and more rebellions. So Han Zhong is at minus 14, but a lot of that is reserves which should switch around now that we're making some food. So that should go away. Shuo Fang is also reserved, so we just stabilized public order with that deal. That's very good. Right, I think that's all we can get done for the harvest. Assign any ancillaries to our administrators to increase food production in their respected respective provinces. We can have a look. Not you. Pop growth. Uh, we don't have any uh, followers that do food production. We can increase public order in an administered commandery, but I'm not sure we really need to now. Both of our administered commanderies actually have positive public order anyway. So, no, we're not going to do that. Um, right. Yep, I think that's going to do it for the harvest. We are in a 
tight spot, but not a terrible spot. Right, Ma Tung is challenging Guo Sir. They have got a shit ton of cavalry, including cataphracts. New foo. It's saying Valiant Defeat, and the numbers are more or less the same. They have a lot of cavalry. Retreat and maybe get the garrison out of range, Imatek. I don't think the army would pursue us if we retreated, though. We have got some woodland on our side, which should negate the cavalry. Son has arrived just in time to promote his usual orcish level of violence and say fuck him up. Regretted Germ is saying fight, fight, fight. You know what? Just for just for regretted Germ because he's new to the stream and I want him to have some input here. So we're going to fight this. It's possible we'll still lose, but we're going to try. Xiong you cheng zhu. This is going to be a tough one, but if we can win this battle, we've basically crushed Ma Tung. He's not going to be able to recover in time to be a threat. Whereas if we'd have retreated, this perpetual fucking thorn in our backside would have just remained. If we can't get the do job done with Guo Sir's army, we would have to bring Lu Bu's army all the way back up here. And that's not going to work when Liu Chong's knocking at the front door. So we are going to try and win this one, I guess. I've won some insanely stacked against me battles in Rome Total War. Yes, it is possible, but it, it depends on a lot of factors. Alright, we have got the forest over here, which... Provides ranged resistance. Okay. You know what? Let's go with Gen Sword Guard. Yeah, I tell you what. One of the more experienced. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. The two more experienced Sabre Militia are going to flank the Gen Sword Guard. Apologies guys, this one's going to take a while to set up. Then the less experienced Sabre Militia is going to deploy at the back. Our archers are going to deploy second... Alright, I tell you what. Deploying it in the trees is just frustrating me. So, we're going to bring these guys over here. We are going to put... Spear guards... 
on the flanks. Archers across the back. Axe band, saber militia. Axe band. Move them a bit more central. No, it's not the way that I want that to work. I'll do uh, G militia. G militia. Dong Li. No. Niu Fu's going to be on the right flank because it's probably going to be the flank that the enemy contacts first. Dong Li will have left. Right. Thing is, we don't want them to have ranged resistance. Okay. We're gonna go from there. That should do it. Cool. Deployables. We're gonna go tower over here tower over there stakes and stakes Tar pits could be extraordinarily dangerous here, given that we want to fight in the trees. But where would we want them? We don't want them in front, because then they're going to spread over our lines. I mean, it's going to spread over our lines anyway, even if we put them at the back, but... I highly doubt we will need them, but we're going to put them up at the top of the hill so that if we do need to fall back into the plains, we can light the forest on fire. I don't think we'll need to do that. And even if we do, it's not going to go very well, but that's the plan for those. Bring it, mother fudgers. They may have fire arrows, actually, Ryan, which is a fair point. Not seeing any on those guys. Not seeing any on those guys. Doesn't mean that they don't have them, but uh, I'm not seeing them. Also, 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 also. Cal troops are everyone's best friend. I'm actually going to put some 
stair as well, just in case they try and come around that flank. Uh, somebody stuffed up where they threw their car traps. Well, now all we can do is wait for the armies of Martung to arrive. Um, want the front line to be in guard mode. I'm not seeing fire arrows. And to be fair, the ability that grants that is Composure, which is the one that also grants night battles. So we know that Martung and Marchao's retinues don't have them. Because we already checked if they could do night battles. And he only brought two units to the fight. I don't know which two units he brought to the fight, but I don't... It doesn't. He's level one as well, so I don't think strategists start with Composure. So he's highly unlikely to uh, to have it. That's pretty terrifying. He brought two archers. Yeah, he's a level one strategist that's obviously only just been recruited for the first time to an army. So he came with two archer militia. He's level one. He's not going to have composure. And we know these two don't have it either. So they're not going to have fire arrows. Cinematic mode is awesome, regret. Yes, it is. Uh, so if you just press K, it does it removes the hood. But if you do Alt and K, it gives you the uh, the widescreen effect. Oh wow. Those mountains look sick. Our hidden men have been seen. Tragic. Wait a minute. How the fuck did they get there? Well, they're going to get shot at. <laughs> you happy with your decisions in life, lads? Don't waste ammo on one unit of Saber Militia. They'll end up dead anyway. Probably should have checked before now. Nobody wants to duel new foo. Well, that's not ideal. Ma Chao is beelining forward. Um, 
you guys are making a terrible decision. Jesus Christ, I hope it was worth it, gents. Charge forward and go get them. New Fugo fight Marcha, whether he wants to fight us or not. How did he not come off his horse there, charging in a braced spear guard? Whoa, why are you guys shaken? Oh, because of Marcha, that's why. Fucking hate him. Damn it, some of my troops are retreating. Ma Chao is retreating. Go and get more tongue. That unit of mounted lancer militia is causing mass disruption. Well, they've got rid of one unit. I think we may have lost that unit of mounted lancer militia. Oh, they've uh, run away at least. But not to worry, they did their job. Go get my tongue, please. Because he's really annoying me. Draw out of ammo. Get my tongue. Get them, they've still got lots of ammo. Stuck in there. Get them. Uh, yeah, you don't need to fight them. Get out there. Oh, good. New Fu lost his horse. Wolf Sir taking on Ma Chao. Our archers up here have run out of ammo. Ma Chao's legging it again. Well, 
军仓皇逃窜，一群懦夫。进攻，射手在此，加速前进。杀！注意，剑甲不留。Right, you no. You stay on him. You don't have a horse, so don't bother chasing him because you're not going to catch him, are you? You're on foot. Could probably do with you coming back, not running halfway across the map. My tongue's down. Good stuff. Catch him! Catch him! Catch him! Go get him! I prefer having the army in one group because I lock the formation. It means I can move the formation to wherever I want. Everybody's chasing somebody. Come on. Yes! Dong Li! Chasing a bish down. Pretty sure that is one of Martung's soldiers right there. Do you want to go and maybe hit him? Go on. Oh, too late. Well, you can fight your way, Ryan, and I'll fight my way. <laughs> you know what? As a celebration, light that shit on fire. Taking scorched earth to a ridiculous level, but screw it. It does spread to the trees, I knew it would. I wonder if before the battle ends that whole forest will just be on fire. <laughs> Maybe it only burns the trees around it, but this tree is definitely on fire. But I seem to re think... I'm sure the last time I had a tar pit in a forest that it burned the whole thing. I don't know, could be wrong. It's definitely spreading to the trees around the fire, uh, the tar pit. Hello, why have you stopped? Regretted Germ 3, thank you for the follow, welcome to the doghouse buddy. Gotta go, no worries, thank you for stopping by buddy, hope to see you again soon. We do Total War 3 Kingdoms every Monday and Wednesday at 8pm whatever time it is in the UK. BST or GMT. I was in a pretty big battle and I had artillery, I fired flaming shot into the enemy in a forest. Though it hadn't caught about 5 minutes of intense fighting later I looked back at the forest raging inferno. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, that's definitely spread to trees that weren't in contact with the uh, tar. New Fu just 
surveying since he's lost his horse. Lo Dong Li, um, would you like to run that way? Whoa, sir. Uh, go get them. Ryan, I think that is most definitely spreading. Come on, lads, do some stabbing. Your sword's practically up their backside now. Oh, an enemy tower. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent that has spread beyond the tar pit. get there but we'll try trying to do maximum damage because a it's going to help with the campaign map and b i want to see how much of this forest will actually set on fire before the battle ends Well, they've made it. Some of them. Oh no! These guys doubled back with a swarm of infantry behind them. That's not smart. Yes, that is well and truly a light. I think we've probably killed as many of them as we... I mean, Guo Sir's still cutting people down, I guess. You don't kill trees, they combat global warming. I mean, no offence, Cam, but uh, these trees are looking pretty fucking warm, mate. Welcome to the stream, though, Cam. <laughs> I think we'll let Guo Sir continue to have his fun since they've almost made the line anyway. You'd think they'd drop the weapons so they could run faster. Yeah, I think that'd be cool in Total War. If, if I'm alright with them keeping them when they're retreating, but when they're shattered like this, which is like they're totally leaving the battlefield, it'd be nice if they literally just dropped the weapons and the flags and started legging it. I wouldn't even mind if when they did that they actually got like a 10% speed boost. been playing tech support for my team at work today every solution has been try restarting and the response oh that worked wonderful it's amazing how many times that does do it to be perfectly honest so that character is dead Ma Chao and Ma Tung are both still alive, somehow. Oh. <laughs> Ma Tung may not be alive for very long, we've captured him. He is a 61 year old, level 5 vanguard, legendary, who is careless, cruel, loyal, fiery, energetic, and scarred. He's friends with, or Ultsworn with Pong De. He's rivals with his son Ma Chao, he's rivals with Guo Se, who's just captured him, 
and with New Fu and Dong Li. I think these three rivalries only just came about as a result of this battle, though. But what do we think? Zhong Liao is saying off with his noggin. What do we reckon, guys? Anybody else got any feedback on what to do with the captured Martung? Set him up as a patsy. Um, we cannot force him to be a vassal, even though he's a faction leader. But that would be a cool option if you captured a va uh, faction leader, that you could just force them to be a vassal. Chop that shit-eating grin right off his face. I think we're executing Ma Tung here by Zhong Liao's request. Uh, we will get an ex a nice family spear. And we will... You know what? We'll ransom. Ma Chao has signed peace with Liu Zhong. A duel! The battle won, our general chases down the enemy general and challenges them to a duel. Everyone watches, rapt, as the two leaders clash each giving good account of their abilities. After an impressive bout that will be talked about for years, our general stands victorious. Ma Chao has been wounded. He's also succeeded his father as the faction leader. We've gained a family spear, which uh, Guo Se is going to take. Since he's the one who chose to lop off Ma Tung's head. New Fu has leveled up as well, but we'll hold that until Arya is here. New Fu and Dong Li, so Arya and Tyler have become Oathsworn. Dong Li and Ma Tung have become rivals. So actually, I think that New Fu and Guo Se were already rivals with Ma Tung, but Dong Li certainly gained it in that battle. So... Should be a relatively easy job to clean them up here now, yeah. So we'll just delegate this one. Don't even know who that guy is, but he... Oh, uh, Zhang Jian, he's dead. We shall occupy this farmland. They have been fighting bitterly. Yes, they have. Grocer is going to repair this farmland because he knows we've got food issues. And then Grocer, 53 year old level 4 champion, I think. It says Vanguard, his colour is champion. He doesn't know what he is. 53 year old class confused character Grocer is a paranoid thug who is ambitious, suspicious, and direct. And we will give him You know what? I feel like an ambitious and suspicious and direct person would both be backhanded, brutal and not care and therefore hamstring feels like a really good ab ability to give him. A carefully placed strike hobbles the unlucky enemy. We will give him that. We've now secured Anding. And we gained a military G from the uh, settlement. I don't believe that Dong Li could use that. No, she can't. So, question is what would Guo Se rather use? I think he'd rather use a spear. Uh, now nah, he's getting old and I feel like a military G is more appropriate. Like it's a slower weapon, it's more brutal, but the spear is much more movement. So but you know what, we'll just give him, we'll give him the military G. May I suggest offering peace to Ma Chao for whatever we can gain. We have achieved our goal of reclaiming on Ding and have many enemies elsewhere. Uh, I'll at least have a look at it. I don't know if I just want to peace out with him, but... If he's willing to become a vassal, I might consider it. 
which he is. So, I mean, can we grab territory off him as well? Because that would be useful, but uh, it's not strictly necessary. We could get Shuofang salt mine off him, but I think we'd maybe have to pay him for the privilege. I mean, I'm willing to pay him to get that territory, to be honest, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, that's not even going to come close, is it? Alright, well, what do we reckon to vassalizing Ma Chao, guys? Uh, he's got two, uh, three territories left, rather. They are split around us. Um, but he would become our vassal, and he isn't... He doesn't want or doesn't give a shit about a guarantee of autonomy, which means we could uh, annex him la later on down the line. Yo, 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 Corey in the stream. Corey, how's your Monday going, mate? Welcome to the stream. It's a yes from Zhang Liao to vassalizing Ma Chao. I feel like you may be the only active sp person who votes in the chat right now, Ryan. Um, so we're going to go with Ma Chao and say, I mean, I, let's see if we can milk a little bit more out of him because we've got a bit of... Uh... Alright, that may be a bit much. Okay, he does not want to pay us money, that's for sure. Uh, you know what? He'll take 450. I want him to think it's a favourable deal, so we'll find something slightly lower than that. Yep, 430 shirt, sure, plus being our vassal. Corey saying go for it as well, that's two votes for. So we're going to vassalise Ma Chao, which should uh, issue ultimatum to Han Sui. Yes. We don't want Han Sui to continue fighting Ma Chao now that he's our vassal. So that should have now secured our rear. Now the fight is in the southeast and potentially against the factions in the mountains here. But that's pretty damn good, to be honest. Um, Ryan. Orders for Lubu. Uh, 1.8k we gain from tributaries. Some of that comes from the Han, probably most of it. But yes, we do get money from Ma Chao being a vassal. Orders for Lubu's army, Ryan? We will move east towards Luoyang trade port. Like, as far as you can down the road? Hmm, yeah. Okay. Lubu's forces moving east towards those of Liu Chong. Anding. Anding apparently has zero population right now. <laughs> uh, we will upgrade the drifter farming camp to a farm laborer camp. Bashi no longer needs to be exempt from tax, so it can start adding a little bit to the pool. And Shuo Fang can upgrade its tribal horse camps to tribal horse herders, so we will go ahead and do that as well. And I think 
that's really all we can get done for the autumn of 206. So we will proceed into the winter of 206 AD with our northwest secure for the time being at least. Zhong Zhang will sign peace with us and pay us 776 sure. Zhong Zhang is of course here in the mountains. She owns the... I mean there's three shades of green going on here but uh, these ones. Not this dark of shade or this lighter shade. The middle shade. What do we think? Dubious, Guosa could potentially march into those lands. He could. In fact, he has nowhere else to march unless he's coming to join Lu Bu against Liu Chong. And 776 sure is not a lot by the usual standards. We've been offered upwards of 2,000 sure for most peace deals. I think my position on it is that we that we refuse with the uh, the mindset that Guo Se is going to begin his campaigns over there as soon as he gets mobile and east. But what do you guys think? Diao Chan says refuse. Well, Zhong Liao is dubious and Diao Chan's refusing, so no, Zhong Zhang, we will not make peace with you. Liu Chong just declared war on Ma Chao. And An Ding and Chuo Fang have completed buildings. Uh, we will begin bringing Guo Se back yeah, south. How old is Guo Se? 53. He's still got seven years left. Eat them alive, ruin them. Cam coming in with some aggressive di diatribe there. Uh, An Ding, why are you... Rebellion mustering. Oh, yeah, okay. We know about that. Um, I'm not particularly worried about the rebellion. Guo Se will probably swing that way and boff them before he goes east. So, Ryan, Guo... Uh, Guo... Lu Bu's army. Lu Bu is 47, Zhong Liao is 37, and Diao Chan is 34. Um, your army has just finished replenishing completely. Kindly show them the error of their ways. Um, you are more or less even between Liu Chong's army and the trade port garrison, Ryan. The garrison's slightly stronger than you. You're slightly stronger than Liu Chong's army. What would you like to do? Don't believe there's anything else we can do anywhere else. I would like to move a bit closer to our border and drop into ambush. I either want to catch the army alone or have it leave. Hopefully he does or the other inst one or the other instead of sitting there. Okay. Apparently you guys have a, a practically 100% ambush success chance regardless of the terrain. Do you want to move? 
I mean, you can move right up to the border and drop into ambush. Would that do? What'd that do? Yeah, that worked. Very well. Lubu in ambush. And that's going to conclude the winter of 206 AD. Uh, just before I do that, though, let me have a look at something. Dong Li is 24 and she is not yet married. Dong Zhuo has one son who is 11 and three daughters. And Dong Min has two daughters and a son. Dong Li is 24 years old. I feel like we should be looking to get her married, to be honest. Hold on. Hmm. No characters that can marry. Um, what's Dong Li like? Oh, Dong Li is also um, Tyler's sponsored character, though, so we couldn't necessarily marry her off without his approval. 13, 6. Wait a minute, Dong Min has two girls who are six. Did he have twins? Oh well. Um, I guess we will proceed then, because we can't marry Dong Li off without uh, Tyler being here. Well, yes, Zer uh, were had twins, but Dong uh, Dong Min is father to twins, is what I meant. Han Sui will pay us 38 sure for a non-aggression pact. What do we think? Hans Wei, of course, is the dude we made peace with just before Ma Chao, who owns the territories, the now very fringe territories in the northwest. 38 sure is practically nothing. You're saying accept, Brian. Zhong Liao says we should accept a non-aggression pact with Han Sui. Anybody else? Don't forget you don't have to have a sponsored character in the campaign in order to have an opinion on some of these. got enough to deal with and it's and 38 sure is 38 sure so working towards positive relations is a good thing especially after we recently kicked the fuck out of him okay let me just check something here yeah he gains an extra two if we don't take the money I mean shit for 38 sure do we just take it off and, in, and improve our relation by 22 instead of 20 yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Ryan. Let's just take it without the money. Oh, interesting. Well, delegate and die. Um, we will take the income because the punishments are pretty irrelevant. Yun Xiao and Jung Zhang signed peace. 
Sun Sun Liu Biao signed piece. Oh no! I think I forgot to lower Xiao Yuan's loyalty. He's defected back to Tao Tao. Sleeping Dragon! Word reaches you that the great Zhuge Liang self-styled Sleeping Dragon, after the ridge near to his home, has offered his services to a warlord he considers worthy of his talents. Niu Fu has gained the philanthropic trait and Guo Se has gained the stubborn trait. We've also gained an additional family spear. Uh, right. Hold on. Can you buff her? Yeah, you can. Alright. Lead you work and buff her. Fuck off, it just said that we could. It's annoying. Alright then. I guess Guo Sir needs to come down and do it. It's not like that's the first time that's happened, lady. Who is this dude? Who, Li Jue? He's one of Dong Zhuo's starting officers, but he's old at the start of the game, so we've never deployed him. But I deployed him in an emergency to defend Anding. Which, now that that's done, he can stand down. And Guo Sir can make his way towards the east. Okie do. Um, are we holding in ambush, Ryan, until Liu Chong makes a move? Is that what the plan is here? Because so far he hasn't made one. And I will look at getting something together. I don't actually think that I really want to Chong An producing food. Although if we took its food production away, we would be at net zero. Uh, I'm going to get a market officer, which is going to require specific reform, which is further up the tree than we already have. So therefore, we are going to get private tutors. The tutors at the capital will teach one everything they need to know of the ways of governing. Let's fortify. I just want to bait him out of that town. Okay. Lubu switching to encamp stat status stat finish the word and we can actually afford a new spy now that uh, Xiao Yuan has defected back to Cao Cao Liu Bei Gongsun Zan Liu Biao Tao Ying As if Liu Bei's got a potential turncoat. Oh, Fan Chou's available again. Fan Chou's is historically one of Dong Zhuo's officers, but um, surely he's pretty old by now. Well, he's 42, I guess that's not super old. I thought he was older. Let's hire Fan Chou and try to send him somewhere. 
where would be productive? My lord, our economy is stable and people are fed. I would make a humble request. Don't fuck with it. Are you talking about employing Fan Cho? Oh, when you're talking about removing food from Chang'an? Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, kind of do want to send Fan Cho somewhere. I'm just not sure who I want to keep an eye on. Part of me wants to send him to Han Sui. Part of me wants to send him to Liu Chong. Bear in mind we have food from trade with the Kong Rong Roadshow. We should maintain a cushion until that expires. That's true, we do. Alright. Where should we send or, or dispatch Fan Cho to? I'm thinking Han's way. Hmm. Or perhaps even Yuan Shao, since he's the most powerful. Zhong Liao saying Liu Chong. Alright, we'll go with Zhong Liao then. We'll dispatch Fan Cho to join Liu Chong, hopefully. It is the spring of 207. No, too late, Ryan. <laughs> uh, let's proceed and see what happens. Chong Liao's back must be aching carrying the Grand Commandant to success. Must be. Uh, Chu Ying is on his way back from his assignment. Li Juo is back in the capital. And Lu Bu has gained the fiery trait. There's one for Mike there. Jia Shu Imutek, if you're lurking, is has gained the brilliant trait. And Li Juo has gained the energetic trait. I feel like, oh, hello, Liu Chong's actually, his second army's actually taken Shang Yong. Alright, I feel like uh, Li Juo's service in defending An Ding, such as it was a small task, and he is 64, he's been with us for a long time, technically since 186 AD. I think I'm going to give him the administratorship of Han Zhong and then raise him at least with a defensive force here to hold Han Zhong. What do you reckon? Uh, you did not already have the brilliant trait Imatech, but you have it now. What do we think about giving Li Juo the administratorship of Han Zhong so that he can hold this southern flank, guys. Two level ups. Oh no, we got multiple level ups actually. 
Uh, Zhe Yue and Chu Ying have leveled up. Chu Ying is a 20-year-old level 2 sentinel with a tax collector background. He is honourable, concerned, and vain. I think somebody who's honourable and concerned about others would be diligent. So we'll give him diligence. And then Zhe Yue has also leveled up. She is a 38-year-old level 2 clerk who is healthy, artful, perceptive, creative, cunning, and philanthropic, and she is the wife of Dong Min, I believe. Yes, she is. She can either have zeal or stability. I mean, hell, somebody who's, like, healthy, artful, creative, philanthropic... Uh, she's zealous, for sure. Going to send a rider to Guo Se, asking him to prepare to garrison Chong An against Liu Chong whilst I push south towards Shang Yong. And I think the old man has earned something to prevent retirement being peaceful. Very well. Um, let's start off by saying... Oh, do we not have an... I thought we had an administrator position. Apparently we only have two. Um... In that case, I guess we'll currently just raise Li Zhuo's retinue in Han Zhong. He is going to be the de facto administrator. He's going to need to recruit some troops. Although we should maybe give him some officers. Doesn't look like any of our strategists particularly like him. Dong Min is old. Zhou Tai might uh, be worth throwing in there. I'm pretty sure he's not ours. Yeah, Chu Ying's our last one. So we're going to put Zhou Tai in with him. The two of them can garrison uh, Han Zhong. They are going to need some archer militia to do that with. And we'll give them some saber militia too. Well, we'll give Li Zhuo some saber militia so we don't drop below 500 income. You could always give someone in an admin slot a higher court position. What's up, everyone? Sorry, literally just woke up an hour ago. Welcome to the stream, Mike. We could do that, uh, Imotec, yes. The Grand Excellency manages the affairs of the Treasury and Overseas Development Projects in your commanderies. Um... Yeah, I guess we could. I thought you were missing, Imatech. I actually looked to do this uh, a couple of turns ago. Um, Jia Xu, we would like to offer you the position of the Grand Excellency. Do you accept? Apparently Jashu does not accept, so therefore we will move on. Too bad. That's why I didn't offer it to him in the first place, because he's not actually there. <laughs> yes, even though I do feel like I personally fit better as the Grand Tutor. Um... 
Well, you've done such a good job turning Wu Du around that we're going to make you the Grand Excellency. Apparently you don't harmonize with Lu Bu, but that's fine. So Jia Xu is going to move up in the world onto the council. Uh, Imotech as the Grand Excellency, you are of course able to construct things anywhere in the faction. Although, you know, if there's a commandery that has an administrator, they'll probably need to confirm that they want what you've ordered. However, that should mean... Hey, Dong means happy. That should mean that we can assign Li Jue to uh, the administrator of Han Zhong. And then we can invoke the council again. Assign a grand director, settlement administration, raise a new force. Yep, well, those will happen when they happen. Yeah, I almost did, Ryan, to be honest. But uh, the difference is, Jia Xu has actually been administrating his commandery. Guo Se has been a running around fighting battles instead of administrating his commandery. Plus, he's younger than Jia Xu, so it didn't make much sense. But I did really want to go, good idea, Guo Se. <laughs> he's been defending his commandery. That's true. But, uh, you know... He's old sworn with New Fu, friends with Dong Li. Apparently he harmonized with Ma Tung because they both respect discipline. But uh, didn't stop him chopping his head off. He's ambitious, direct and stubborn. So I think even if Lu Bu's or Zhang Liao's instructions reach him... Guo Se is going to ignore them and go for she, her. Right. Um, I think... Do you have movement left? Yes, you do, Ryan. Uh... Well, actually, Mike's here now. So, Mike, your situation at present is that Zhong Liao, after pacifying the north, uh, he has, if I put the map the right way around, uh, he has taken Anding farmland and then forced peace with Han Sui, which he turned over Shuofang horse pastures to us. Guo Se then took Anding livestock farm and we vassalized Ma Chao, who took over from his dad, who was executed by Guo Se. So we've now pacified the northwest. Um, Zhong Liao then moved Lu Bu's army down here because Liu Chong has taken Luo Yang trade port. Liu Chong is still in the trade port, and his second army has come down here and taken the Han settlement of Shangyong Lumberyard. So, Mike, with all of that in mind, what do you wish to do with Lu Bu's army? Size him, Captain. Jesus. I was going to have Guo Se fortify Chang'an whilst we moved around to deal with the other forces, but that plan just got pissed on. I say we siege the trade port. What do you say, Captain? The garrison is quite significant on top of a full army. I wouldn't advise it. That's kind of why Zhong Liao's been holding at the border, trying to bait Liu Chong to come out and fight him, Mike. But so far, Liu Chong is not taking the bait. Lay an ambush, says Lubu. 
Blue Boo laying an ambush. Uh, Zhong Liao did try that, but you never know, it might work this time. Uh, in the meantime, we will push on into the harvest of 207. Oh yeah, also Mike, we are now in a coalition with uh, Liu Bei and Kong Rong, because they asked us to be. Wu will sign peace with us if we give them a jade sickle and the robe of the omen maker. What do we think, guys? Fuck off, Wu. Zhong Liao obviously not a fan of that proposal. Lu Bu neither a fan. Go away, Wu. Whoopty woo, Jesus. Spy dispatched, Fan Cho. A jade bird, over tea, you tell your general of your dream of a jade bird. The general takes a long sip of their tea, places the cup down and looks you in the eye. A vision of a jade bird is an auspicious prophecy, the jade indicating imperial matters, and the bird a being that can traverse the gap between earth and heaven. The relationship deepens between Dong Zhuo and his wife, and he gained bonus experience. Li Jue has leveled up to level 2. Well done Li Jue. Li Jue is a 65 year old level 2 vanguard, legendary vanguard, with a vicious strongman background, who is arrogant, energetic, brave, reckless and philanthropic. Jesus, he's basically just a wrecking ball. I think somebody who is reckless, brave, and energetic kind of needs to have a shitload of endurance. So we're going to give him endurance. Uh, Dong Pei Shan has gained the artful trait. Uh, whilst Zhang Liao and Lu Bu discuss what their next move is, Guo Se is going to continue his march east. And that just leaves us with orders for... Lu Bu's army, Mike. Liu Chong still holding in the trade port. We will move for the other army. So, following Zhong Liao's plan, Mike, what you're saying is you want to withdraw back towards Chang'an with a view to hooking down to Shangyong, is that correct? Yes, very well. Falling back towards Chang'an. Uh, let me just check something. Okay. That's fine. That's going to do it for the harvest, I think. On to the autumn. Uh, Liu Bei wants to invite Yuan Shao to the coalition with him and us and Kong Rong. Kong Rong does not want to, which means we have the deciding vote. Changyong Lumberyard via Chang'an, and not through that fecking pass. It will take us a year to get our army through that. Do we want Yuan Shao in the coalition to restore order? He's the strongest person in the campaign right now, Yuan Shao. 
Um, however, once Liu Bei and Yuan Shao were in a coalition together, technically speaking, if well, if all three of the other guys in the coalition go against us, they can put whoever they want in and we don't get a say. Zhong Liao saying accept he will decline regardless, and Lu Bu saying accept as well. We will accept and Yuan Shao rejected. Well fucking well done, Ryan. Cao Cao is requesting to join the coalition, but Liu Bei and Kong Rong say no. Orion, welcome to the stream. Are we taking over the colonies today? No, we are still trying to take over ancient China. Or rather, we are now trying to take over ancient China, because the last time you asked that question... Liu Chong has moved. The last time you asked that question, we were playing Imperator Rome as Sparta. We're rescuing the tea supply. Yes. Liu Chong formed a coalition with Tao Tao. I guess Cao Cao didn't want to be rejected. Fan Cho has been recruited by Liu Chong. And now we have Honourable versus Deceitful. You are in a discussion with one of your scholars. You put it to him that honour is the ultimate virtue, unassailable and true. He returns that honour and virtue may make one's soul rich, but never one's pockets. Penniless is the virtuous man. Victorious is the pragmatic leader, he laughs. I think that Dong Zhuo would side with Deceit, so we're going to side with uh, Grand Excellency Jia Shu. He's right. A knife in the back solves most problems. Beginning with him. We've gained a bow, Ancillary. That's nice. I mean, I don't know if Sarah's still paying attention or if she's lurking, but I remember that Diao Chan was looking for a bowl. Sure. But I don't think she's still there. So no bowl for her, I guess. Uh, Li Jue is still going to maintain his position. Um, Ryan and Mike, I think Liu Chong is somewhere in here. Because he came out of the trade port and up this way and then disappeared in the fog of war. His captain, or not his captain rather, his general Zhu Shou is now outside of Shangyong Lumberyard. I'll request it on her behalf as her general and husband. Wow, I mean, hard to refuse that. I'll second that as her friend, Jesus Christ. Well... You guys are making the decision that she no longer gets her motherfucking clayfish, then. Because it's a motherfucking clayfish, clayfish. I guess we're going to go with it. So Diao Chan, sent by Dong Zhuo at the request of Lu Bu and Zhong Liao, has been given a bow. Yes, you are, Mike. You are now friends with your wife and oath-sworn with Zhong Liao. However, what else have we got going on here? All right, that's all of that done. Uh, where do you boys want to go? Um, let me know. Guo Sir is making his way down town, walking fast. Faces pass and he's she her bound. Whoa, conflicting here. Are we going with the general or with the captain? I mean, I'm going with the general, but the general could always change his mind. Oh, Zhang Liao and Lu Bu in fierce debate once again. Mm. 
Lu Bu making the decision that we're going to go for him. There he is. Alright. I think that's all we can do for the autumn. So we will see what happens as we move into the winter of 207. We got about half an hour left on the stream, guys. Liu Chong and I think Ju Shou both moving to the lumberyard there. Cao Cao has pulled Liu Chong into the war against Liu Bei. Whoa, sir. I'm going to attack Shi He fishing port. Uh, he's direct, ambitious, and stubborn. I think he's going to delegate. Doesn't say he's reckless, actually. I don't think he's going to back off, but we'll starve them out for a turn, do a bit of damage. All right. Lubu, what's your next move? Send word to Li Jue asking for reinforcements. Oh dear. Arrogant, energetic, brave, reckless. Uh, Li Jue is going to hear your request for reinforcements, Lu Bu. And he sends word back that he will set out immediately. Meet up with Li Jue. How are you going to do that with the big mountains in the way? I'm curious. Which way are you going? Where do you want to meet up, Mike? Are you wanting to double back and go through this narrow pass? Or are you coming down this way and meeting up at Shangyong but on opposite sides of the enemy? What What's the plan? Double back. Methinks Zhang Liao is probably going to want to have a conversation about that, so I will hold off on doing it just for now. I'm not sure that's a very convincing argument, Zhong Liao. Yeah. The Grand Commandant and his captain coming to a disagreement. Ultimately, though, Mike, it is your decision. Mm. 
we will move forward and see what happens. How far forward are you wanting to move, Mike? Doan coming in with 110 bits. Thank you very much, Doan. Appreciate that, man. 110 bits from Doan. The biddies are flying in. Which actually, Doan, puts you in... Well, you're so far the only person who's given bits this month, which gives you that golden bit. Top spot for bits. Thank you very much, Doan. Appreciate that, man. That isn't right. Matt, he's given bits this month, hasn't he? I don't know what the fuck Streamlabs is weighing that up on. That's interesting. Oh, it's of the week. It's the weekly top cheerers. Okay, that makes sense. I thought it was monthly. My bad. Can you see Chong's range? Yes. Be advised what Ryan said is correct. This is his forced march movement. So he can move up to here in Forced March, but he can't engage in Forced March. And Forced March adds about half again of his movement. So roughly two thirds of this movement range will be his normal movement range. According to the leaderboard, Matty has donated 5,500 this week. I think it depends where you draw the line in a week. I think maybe the Streamlabs weekly thing resets on a Monday. So technically, Dylan's the only one who's donated this week. But Matty has donated within the last week. I think that's what it is. I don't fucking know. All the way. Very well. Lubu making his way south. And that's all we're going to be able to do for the winter of 207. See what happens as we enter 208 AD. Liu Chong is pushing out of Xiangyong Lumberyard towards Ba Shi Toolmaker. Ju Shou is in Xiangyong Lumberyard. Gonna need orders for Lu Bu. But uh, I'm just gonna check on Guosa's siege up here. Low casualties, decisive victory, that's what we wanted. He's gonna drop a delegate and take Shi her fishing port back. And Dong Li has gained another rank that Tyler's not here to grab. Guo Se has gained the determined trait. Now he's stubborn and determined. Jesus. Head towards the village with Li Zhuo. How, uh, you can't attack the lumber yard this turn, Mike. You can't quite reach it, but you can reach the edge of its circle. So how far are you wanting to go? Why are we losing so much money now? I don't know. Right outside. Zhang Liao challenging that decision. Uh, 
Let's do that. Okay. Uh, that should be enough to drop into ambush. Lubu dropping into ambush. Li Jue is going to move down to the river crossing. And because he's reckless and arrogant, he's not going to be hiding his army. He's just waiting there because he was asked to become as reinforcements by the Grand Commandant. So he is doing exactly that. Doomsday, welcome to the stream. How's your Monday going, mate? Uh, we also need to pick a new reform. Uh, I had a specific one in mind, didn't I? Was it not this one? I think it was, but I'm going to check. I know it was for Chang'an. Yes, it was. We're going to get Masterful Disguise Techniques. Be unseen, even in plain sight. That's actually going to open up another spy position for us. Although we can't really afford to employ a different spy. But we could potentially send Chu Ying, because we're already paying his wages. Where do we think Chu Ying would be a useful spy? I will send word recommending he stays at a safe distance, and we will call for him if we get into trouble. Very well. I'm sure it wouldn't take a messenger too much to clamber through this forest. Um, Li Jue, upon receiving the Grand Commandant's orders, will withdraw slightly. Mike saying send Chu Ying to Yuan Shao. It's possibly a good idea. We shall deploy Chu Ying to Yuan Shao. Fan Cho is still kind of building his network and stuff, so we're not going to use him. It is spring, so it's time for a save. Jung Jong will sign peace with us for 1763 sure. Jung Jong, of course, owns four settlements along the spine of these mountains. We've just taken the one she took off us with Guo Se. What do we think about this, dear officers? <laughs> Jung Liao and Lu Bu. As if in sync, both just go, I say we accept. Well, that's two officers that are already behind the uh, peace deal. We've reclaimed what we lost, and this would free Guo Sir to move on Luoyang trade port. Well, I'm not seeing any opposition to the peace deal. So we shall go with making peace with Zhong Zhang. Liu Chong's coming back towards the Limbi Yard, but not all the way. Do 
Chu Ying has been dispatched as a spy. Guo Se has gained the philanthropic trait, Zhou Tai has gained the fiery trait, and Dong Wun Yan has gained the dutiful trait. Lots of trait gaining this turn. I'm going to start with Guo Se because he's the easy one to do. He is going to declare war on the Yellow Turban Rebellion. And go through the province that they've got down there, or the city that they've got down there, on his way to Luo Yong. He Dong. Apparently, there's an army in there, but that doesn't worry me too much. Can we take the lumber yard in one turn? Uh, in theory, you are significantly stronger than Zhu Shou's army and noticeably stronger than the garrison. So potentially. Liu Chong is too far away to reinforce them in the battle. But it wouldn't be perfectly clear until you actually attack and see what the delegate is. Can Li Jue reach us in one turn? No, because uh, Liu Chong is actually covering the roads down here. Although, with that said, it does look like he could potentially push up into this forest and be on the edge of reinforcement range. Enforced March. Enforced March, he would absolutely be able to reinforce you guys. He'd actually... <laughs> Enforced March, he could make it to your side through the forest. We will take the village and call Li Jue for reinforcements. Very well. Li Jue is arrogant, energetic, brave and reckless, but he isn't stupid, so he knows that the best position to come at this from is the same side as you guys. So he's going to move over here. And then Lu Bu's forces and push in against the lumber yard. There's your battle screen. If we check the uh, map view, of course, it is going to be a settlement battle, which means there will be towers. What course of action? Fight it so we can take as little troop losses as possible. Ryan with a different opinion. Diao Chan's trebuchets do look to have flaming shot. Yes, they do. And we know that Zhong Liao's two archer militia also have fire arrows. 
So you guys do have some flammable capabilities. They have two strategists who cannot duel, and Jujun, actually, uh, who does 1.4k damage, which is not going to be nearly enough to defeat Lu Bu. Uh, he might be able to best Zhong Liao, but uh, Lu Bu should annihilate him. If you think you can do better than the computer, fight it. If you think the computer will do better, delegate. I think, in all honesty, with flammable trebuchet rounds and two archer units with flammable arrows, flame, uh, flame arrows, that we can neutralize their towers before they will do significant damage. I think Lu Bu, if we can get him in a duel with Ju Jun, is going to wipe the floor with him. Lu Bu is going to annihilate troops left and right. So I actually think that I can probably do better than the computer. And even if I can't, it would still be a spectacle. Then confirm, fight it. Alright, well. Here's what I'm going to do, Mike. Because the stream is due to end in about five minutes. And this battle, whilst I think I can win it, is going to take maybe 15, 20 minutes because it's going to need to, we're going to need to burn the towers down and progress really carefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save here. I'm going to go Dongzhuo prepared to assault Shangyong. Save to cloud. I would like to make it aware that after this region has been secured, I would like to retire myself from Lu Bu's army. Alright. So, Lu Bu is 48. Zhong Liao is 38. Um... Let's make the case now, while my mic's here, Ryan. But we will not be fighting this battle in this stream. So Zhong Liao wants to retire himself from Lu Bu's army. What does that mean? He wants to return to the capital or something else? Because I think, with Lu Bu being your general and the Grand Commandant of all of Dong Zhuo's forces, that he, uh, he definitely gets the last say on that right now. I do not feel like I am fulfilling my potential. I feel like I have performance beyond my duties to the man. Lu Bu, your Captain Zhong Liao, is requesting to depart your army. What say you, Grand Commandant Lu? I wonder what the Grand Commandant is going to say. This is an interesting development. The kind you will only get here on this Twitch channel because we do stupid shit like sponsor an officer. As a dutiful man, I will not do it now in an hour of desperation, but I would like to make you aware of my desire now. Wouldn't the Western style of Lubu be Bulu? Uh, if in if you mean because their first name is their family name, 
Yes, I guess it would be. Only if we have someone that can get close to his combat capabilities. Zhang Liao's not actually that great in combat, I will point that out. Like, he only has a bronze level military gen. I don't know if he's been super amazing in combat, to be fair. And I don't know if uh, you'll be around for the start of the stream next week, Mike, which is why I want the... Uh, if we can get an answer today, then that will mean we've got one for next week. Well, not next week, Wednesday. What am I talking about? Next Dong Zhuo stream will be Wednesday. When did we get good boy Joe Tai? We've had Joe Tai since practically the start of the campaign. I'm pretty sure we picked him up on day one. He's, he's currently serving as Li Jue's captain. Got a pop off Imatech? No worries, buddy. Thank you for stopping by the stream. We'll uh, we'll see you soon, I hope. Have a good one, mate. To be blunt, despite considering you and your wife as good friends, I no longer wish to live in your shadow. Can we switch with Li Jue? What do you mean, can we switch with him, um, Mike? I don't fully understand the question. If so, we can switch now as long as he still helps secure the region. Take Li Jue on as my captain and give Zhong Liao that army. Um, I mean, you definitely can't switch now because Li Jue has used all of his moves to get over here and you're besieging the settlement. But after the settlement is secured, you can probably switch people around as much as you want. However, I'm not sure Administrator Lee is going to feel very very well or very good about being made your captain when he was in command of his own forces. Or Lee Jue's captain. Joe Tai. Jotai does not like Lu Bu, or does not harmonize with Lu Bu. But uh, as the Grand Commandant, Mike, I'm pretty sure you could instruct Jotai to join your army and uh, allow Zhang Liao to join Li Jue's army. If that's what you wanted to do. Uh, due, due to his solitary trait. He dislikes sociability due to it, for sure. He does actually harmonize with Li Jue. So he does harmonize with some people. Okay, so after, just so I'm clear, we're going to do the battle for Shangyong Lumberyard at the start of Wednesday's stream. Once the battle is won, Zhou Tai and Zhang Liao are going to switch places. By order of Grand Commandant Lu. Yes. Okay. Then Ryan. Zhang Liao next, uh, well, on Wednesday, will be joining Li Jue. However long Li Jue remains a general, because he is 65 years old, but we shall see. That's where we'll pick up next time, with the battle, the assault on Shangyong Lumberyard, and then... Zhang Liao and Joe Tai switching places. I love Joe Tai. I have him in me and Tom's Tao Tao in the Liu Bei campaign, and he's such a boss. He really is. All right. Let me find somewhere for you guys to raid then. Uh, 
Um, Uh, da, 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 da. Alrighty. Uh, we are going to raid Mr. Dano. Mr. Dano is currently playing Euro Truck Simulator 2. Um, he's not got t too many people watching right now, so I'm going to take you guys over there to spread some love because you know that's what we like to do when we end the streams here. Uh, it will be sad to see my old sworn friend leave, but it's understandable. Thank you for understanding, Lu Bu. Oh my god, it's so wholesome, but the Lu and the Jong, they're gonna separate, and god knows what's gonna happen on Wednesday with these two splitting apart and joining two different forces. We'll find out on Wednesday at 8 pm BST, British summertime. Uh, the schedule down below will convert that to your time, so feel free to check if you live in a different time zone we'll find out on wednesday what happens when the assault on shang yong lumberyard begins but for the time being i'm going to send you guys over to dano have fun with dano i shall be back in a few hours probably i think four um we've got some brat for stuff on srp to start off with tonight but as soon as that's concluded i'll probably switch to doing some metro leo with sergeant talia charges Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you hanging out. Thank you to those of you who are watching the VOD after the fact. Have fun with Dano, guys. But for the time being, it's going to be Wardog out.